Hello Year 5 and welcome back to Day 3 of our work based around the animation marshmallows. Today your can I is, can I create a success criteria to support my retelling of the animation marshmallows? And the date today is Thursday the 16th of April 2020. For this lesson you will need a pencil, a ruler, plain paper and access to the internet. I'd like you to start by writing the date and the can I neatly at the top of your piece of paper. For today's task, you will need your paper landscape alongside across the top. Please pause the video now to write your date and can I at the top of your piece of paper. When you're finished, click play. A reminder that our key objectives for this narrative include to write with purpose and identify the audience for writing. To use imaginative description by using the techniques that authors use to create characters, settings and plots. Today we'll be looking at the second of those objectives by creating a success criteria to help plan what we'll need to include in our writing to really grab the reader's attention. Now it's time to start off with a warm-up task using similes and metaphors. A simile is a comparison of one thing with another thing of a different kind to make a description more emphatic or vivid. For example, the flower was sweet like honey, or the flower was as sweet as honey. Here, the flower is said to be like honey because of how sweet it is. A simile is usually introduced with the words like or as. Next, we have a metaphor. A metaphor is when the object becomes what it is being compared to. For example, he was a roaring lion. For this task, I would like you to sort the sentences in the box into whether they are similes or metaphors. Now it's time to pause the video and have a go at this task. When you're finished, click play and we'll go through the answers. Now it's time to go through our answers. Let's take a look at our first sentence. Her coat was as smooth as silk. Here, the coat is being described to be smooth like silk. Therefore, this is a simile. The word as was a clue here. Next, we have the sentence, it was raining cats and dogs. This is a metaphor. Rain, as the object in this sentence, has become cats and dogs. Let's take a look at our third sentence. His words were like music to my ears. This is a simile. The word like tells us that this is a simile. It suggests that the person likes or liked the words they heard. Our next sentence, he was a sneaky snake towards his friends. This was a metaphor. The object in this case is the person and they are being described to be a sneaky snake. And finally, he was as cunning as a fox. Again, this is a simile and the clues here were the words as describing the girl to be like a fox because of how cunning she is. Well done if you got those correct. Let's take a look at our next task. Using time adverbials. Time adverbials are words that describe when, for how long, or how often a certain action happened. In the box in the middle of your screen are some examples of time adverbials. Below are some sentences that need to be completed by adding a time adverbial. Now it is time to pause the video and have a go at adding time adverbials to complete the sentences. When you are finished, click play on the video to see how you got on. There may be more than one possible answer to complete the sentence. Let's take a look at our first sentence. Blank, I couldn't speak. 
here I have chosen to include the time adverbial at first. If a time adverbial appears at the beginning of our sentence, this is usually followed by a comma. Let's take a look at our second sentence. My insides, blank, felt like jelly, but I tried my best to ignore it. I have chosen to include the time adverbial, suddenly. My inside suddenly felt like jelly, but I tried my best to ignore it. And finally, our third sentence. Blank. I got dressed and went downstairs for breakfast. Here, I have chosen to use a time adverbial that wasn't in the box, but it still works for this sentence. Quickly, I got dressed and went downstairs for breakfast. Again, a comma has followed after my time adverbial because my time adverbial is at the beginning of my sentence. Well done if you got those correct. Now it's time to create our success criteria. For this task, I will talk you through each step, providing examples as I go. This will help you with creating your own success criteria. First of all, in the innermost part of our success criteria, we have our purpose. Our purpose is why we are writing our story and who it is for. Our purpose is to engage and hook our reader. The next box we have are the effects. The effects are how we are going to achieve this to engage the reader. For example, by being descriptive, by creating suspense, and by telling what happened clearly. The third part of our success criteria are the ingredients. Our ingredients are what we need to include in our writing to create these effects. For example, to be descriptive, we will need to include relative clauses, expanded noun phrases, similes, and adverbials to tell us where, when, and how things happened. To create suspense in our writing, we could use cliffhangers, ellipsis, and powerful verbs. To make sure we tell our reader what happened clearly, we need to use full sentences, paragraphs, and follow the plot structure that we use when creating our story mountains. Finally, we will need to list some examples of how we plan to use these ingredients in our story. So let's take a look at relative clauses. Here I have planned a sentence that I have included a relative clause in, which I would like to use in my story. I sat by the campfire, which burned brightly. Which burned brightly is where I have included my relative clause. Expanded noun phrases. Mysterious, fierce creature with wicked yellow eyes. Here I viewed the adjectives mysterious and fierce to describe the creature or the noun in this sentence. I've also added a little bit more information with wicked yellow eyes. Similes. Again, I've used a simile to describe the creature. Teeth as sharp as daggers. Again, the teeth are being described to be like daggers because of how sharp they are. Also in my story, I plan to use adverbials to tell the reader where, when and how things have happened. Here are some examples. As quick as a flash. Quickly. Suddenly. My effect was that I wanted to be descriptive, 
To achieve this, I needed to use adverbials to show where, when, and how things have happened. Relative clauses to add extra information within my sentences. Expanded noun phrases to be more descriptive. And similes. Here are my examples. Another effect that I wanted to create on the reader was to create suspense. This can be achieved by including cliffhangers or sentences that include ellipsis. Here's an example. When all of a sudden. And powerful verbs. Dashed. Scrambled. Leapt. These are all powerful verbs. These are all better synonyms to replace words like walked, jumped, or hurried. And finally, telling what happened clearly within my story. This is following the plot structure, so starting with my opening, my build up, moving to my dilemma, then to my resolution, and finally, an ending. It is important to include paragraphs to structure my writing. Now it's time to have a go at creating your own success criteria. When drawing your success criteria, remember it will need four sections. Start with the middle, the purpose, and work outwards. Remember to have your paper landscape to allow for more room. Use a ruler and pencil to support your presentation for this task. You're welcome to magpie ideas from the success criteria I have created. However, I would like to see lots of your own examples too. Don't forget to take a picture of your work and upload this to Class Dojo under your portfolio where I can see how you've got on and give you some feedback. Thank you, Year 5. Bye for now.